Hi, we're Relationship Alchemy. Welcome back. My name is Jordan Bessonnier, and this is my husband. Olivier Bessonnier, I'm French. And today we're here to talk to you about conscious communication and language. Yeah, so this is the third episode of this mini-series on uh, intimacy and conscious communication. And mm -hmm. on episode number one, we've talked about uh, that we're going on an adventure Mm -hmm. We're taking a boat or plane mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> to that magical island of intimacy. So uh, why are we doing uh, this uh, broadcast series? Well, we uh, believe in the paradigm shifts from right, wrong, blame, shame, punishment, reward um, towards understanding each other. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a paradigm shift that's not easy to really grasp. Some people have it right away, and that's great for them. But most of us, we've been trained otherwise, mm -hmm. and it's uh, working against us to really open to intimacy. Mm -hmm. So on that first episode, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we decided to go visit that island that we crave so much. Intimacy, mm -hmm. isn't it so sweet? Mm -hmm. So what is intimacy to you? So I define intimacy as the ooey gooey chocolate chip feeling that you get when you're in connection with someone. Yeah, you know, when you feel connected, when you feel fully seen, heard, understood, this deep sense of connection. Mm -hmm. That's what I crave. Mm -hmm. That's what you crave too. Yeah, that's yeah. What I crave. <laughs> and, and that's we managed to create in our relationship sustainably. Mm -hmm. So that's that's our communication here today. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, everybody, uh, intimacy might mean something different for mm -hmm. each person, right? So on the first episode, we def we've defined the territory. So we're going to explore, we are exploring, we're mapping the territory. Mm -hmm. And then today we're talking about language, the language mm -hmm. that we use in intimate relationship that's different mm -hmm. than at work or in politics or mm -hmm. in media or in, you know, intimacy as its own specific language mm -hmm. and then custom and cultures okay mm -hmm. uh, a, a good uh, custom in intimate relationship is to be able to place healthy boundaries for example but that that will be for another episode today we're talking about conscious communication mm -hmm. and that will include uh, empathy mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. understanding each other and all that good thing for me it is where the rubber meets the road. Mm -hmm. Because on the first episode, we've said, you know, what is intimacy to us? Well, we, we made a whole list. So to us, it's love, connection, affection, trust, mm -hmm. uh, transparency, mm -hmm. uh, cultivating kindness, equal power is very important mm -hmm. to us. Mm -hmm. I, I, love, I think that's kind of the, the best definition to intimacy for me is feeling reassured that we're loved and accepted for who we are. Mm -hmm. How does that feel? <laughs> Reciprocity, taking responsibility, accountability, all that good stuff. And we do not want in our intimacy paradise wonderland, mm -hmm. uh, we do not want power struggles. We do not want punishment. We do not want enemy image, codependency, defensiveness, mm -hmm. stonewalling. We do not want any of that. So that's great intentions. Yeah. But how is it going to replay really out? Right, right. That's the question here is... Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Surprise, you brought your stowaway with you. And we did a whole episode on the stowaway, which is also your shadow, um, the self-saboteur. You know, sure, I want all of these things, but why do I not have mm. them currently? What so. is my blind spot that mm. somehow I tend to sabotage that? So we did a whole podcast on that. And if you want to go ahead and listen to that one before you listen to this one, go ahead. Also, they don't need to be in order. Yeah. And so today we are coming back to that island territory that we're creating in our image. And what are we going to talk about? The language. Language. The language that's used on this island. And we kind of already went into it a little bit mm -hmm. i think it's going to be in two parts because there's so much i mean it's going to be conscious communication one-on-one -on -one, uh broad stroke there's <laughs> so much to to talk about so let's let's start to unpack it 
Um, and if you want to download this handout, just head out to um, relationshipalchemy.com. Okay. Um, you can click on the podcast tab if you want to um, listen to the replays or find the links to all the, the apps uh, and find your favorite app to, to listen to this podcast. Mm -hmm. You can also go to free downloads. Mm -hmm. And um, when you enter your email, you can download a whole bunch of stuff. Like we have communication, uh, conscious communication worksheets. We have a journey into intimacy and conscious communication. This is this uh, mini series of this podcast mm -hmm. and the list of universal needs. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, the list of universal feelings yeah, and needs. Uh, Boom. If you would like to download any of these things, just go ahead and head to our free downloads tab and you can print them off and or just save them as PDFs on your phone and you're in action. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's dive in. And, and they, they are um, at the... Um, uh, was that showing my screen? I hope I was showing my yeah, screen. You were. Okay. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, they're also at the end of this handout. You know, at the end of this handout, the last two pages are the list of uh, feelings and needs. Um, because I'm going to give the secret, of, um, the, the secret of this away right away. Mm -hmm. uh, the secret to conscious communication is to speak in feelings. Mm -hmm. So we used to speak in thoughts, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and we, we, we tend to, I mean, the English, English language that we were, were, were taught mm -hmm. uh, is very confusing and not accurate. So I would say, I feel like you don't care about what I'm saying. I need you to pay more attention. Mm -hmm. There's no feelings and no needs in that sentence. Although I used, I feel like you don't care about what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I need you, uh, and it sounds like a need. Those are thoughts, mm -hmm. okay? So <clears throat> we're not used to, to speak in feelings. And actually, the, the brain, mm -hmm. um, you know, when, when something happens, the first thing that we register is our first thoughts, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. But if you want to thrive in your uh, land of intimacy, mm -hmm. you're going to have to learn a new skill if you don't have it already, which is to consciously, uh, as opposed to unconsciously, <laughs> <laughs> speak in feelings and needs, real feelings and real needs. That's mm -hmm. why we have the worksheets. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why we have um, those lists so that, mm -hmm. you know, we, we know how to recognize them because our body recognizes the feelings. Mm -hmm. But the first thing our brain or our, our thought process recognize is a thought. Okay. So I feel disrespected. I feel disregarded. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those are not feelings. Right? Those, those are thoughts. Mm -hmm. You know, like, oh, you don't care about me. That's that's a thought, that's an analysis. We're, we're gonna dive into that. But mm -hmm. I wanted to give you the gist of the secrets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're gonna jump right on into it now. Yeah. If you want to visit the magical land of intimacy, you need to learn the language of this foreign and mysterious country. But it can be very counterintuitive. Nonviolent communication and compassionate communication can be very hard to learn and to apply to real life situations. This is where the rubber meets the road. It's great to have intentions, but how does it come out of your mouth when you get triggered and something mm -hmm. happens? It's truly like learning a new language. The confusing part is that we use English words, but in a very different way. It demands a true paradigm shift, and the learning curve can be hard and frustrating. We believe that in order to sustain intimacy, we need to focus on maintaining connection, and communication is a critical tool of that. Words can connect us mm -hmm. or disconnect us. Everything seems possible when we maintain the sweetness of connection. Or? Or disconnection can feel like being in hell. Yeah. Or in jail. Yeah. Which like, is another version of hell. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's like, oh, you're, you're, you know, you're doing something that triggers me. Mm -hmm. I don't love you anymore. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to talk to you and it feels this disconnection. How does it feel for you? <clears throat> I mean... Yeah, for us, it's uh, yeah. it's it's so painful. Mm -hmm. We it demands of us to find tools and new skills mm -hmm. to come back to connection as fast as we can. Mm -hmm. 
right? Because the hui gui chocolate hui chips. Chocolate chip feeling. That's right. <laughs> Especially with our son, which is who is uh, yeah. almost a year now, eleven months old. It's like this this flow of family of bond is, is uh -huh. so. So nurturing yeah. and uh, satisfying. Um, delicious. Yeah. Can we maintain it? Yeah. That's the question. That's the question. So why choose conscious communication? The purpose of conscious communication is to express yourself in the most direct, authentic, and accurate way. And this helps you to get clearly, clearly heard and understood quickly. It's an invitation for the other to meet your needs willingly, not from pressure or guilt, which is so crucial in intimate relationships. Like yeah. nobody should ever be feel pressured into doing something or guilted. Yeah. Um, because that creates resentment. It's gonna it's gonna backfire at some point. Yeah. Even if the person like bothers it up and go like, okay, which is a submission, you know, yeah. okay, okay, okay. And at some point they go. I can't do this anymore. I'm full and they explode and mm -hmm. everybody wonder why, even they wonder why. Yeah. So um, submitting is not sustainable long term. Mm -hmm. And so overpowering is not sustainable long term. So mm -hmm. pushing or pulling to get your way mm -hmm. or submitting because the other is pushing and pulling to get their way mm -hmm. is not sustainable. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe at work, maybe, sure. you know, in other contexts, but yeah. in an intimate relationship, it's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. So with this type of communication, everybody wins. Yeah. And it's the most direct and radically honest way to express yourself and to share your feelings and needs. So I'm going to give a quick example um, using conscious communication or NBC. I feel lonely. Mm -hmm. I need connection. Aww. Would you give me a hug? Wow. <laughs> I'm melting my heart when I hear that. <laughs> the hooey gooey chocolate chips. <laughs> did you feel it? I did. <laughs> <laughs> so what we did there was we had a feeling. I yeah. feel lonely. Mm -hmm. We had a need. I need connection. Yeah. And we had an actionable request. Mm -hmm. To meet those needs. Would you give me a hug? Mm -hmm. So it's super honest. It's direct. It's accurate. It's accurate. You're it's authentic. She, ex she expressed her reality, mm -hmm. her truth, mm -hmm. directly, authentically, and accurately. Mm -hmm. So this is how we want to communicate, right? Mm -hmm. This is like the ideal here. However, sounds easy. Sounds easy, right? Sounds super easy. <laughs> but the problem is... We've been trained to express ourselves indirectly and inaccurately. Uh, so like this. Like this. So okay. I feel like you're avoiding me. Uh, I need you to give me more attention. Oof. Don't you love me anymore? Ah. <laughs> oof. So it sounds like a feeling. I feel like you're avoiding me. It's not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's an ana analysis. Mm -hmm. I feel like you're avoiding me. I, I, no. I, I'm not avoiding, if I can argue with it, that mm -hmm. means it was not a feeling. No, I'm not avoiding you. Mm -hmm. I feel accused. <laughs> right? Right, right? So all of a sudden I'm like, I did something wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay, so sorry, sorry, sorry. Right, right. I'm not going to avoid you anymore. Right. I, I, I didn't think I was avoiding you, but yeah. okay, I'm going to apologize anyways to please her. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to avoid you uh -huh. or was I avoiding her? Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh, you need um, you need me to give you more attention, but you, baby, you already have all my attention. But I need more. How <laughs> can I give more? I, I, I don't know how to. How's that action, uh, an actionable request? So I, right, I don't know where to right. find it. Find the the, <laughs> the action to meet that right. request, mm -hmm. right? She has a need for me to do something, right? A need for the other to do something. Okay. Mm -hmm. So with and, that request, it has a little bit of guilt tripping in it. Right? It's. I mean, don't you love me anymore? Yeah. That's, that's terrible. really guilt tripping. That's terrible. Um, it's demanding. Yes. It's demanding. And it comes across as needy. Yeah. 
and we want to avoid all of those things. So for for a while, you know, I'm gonna go. Oh, sorry, baby. Right, oh, right. yeah, yeah. I'm gonna give you more attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I to, don't you? I'm gonna try to reassure her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love you. I totally love you. And at some point, I go, man, I need to breathe. Yeah. So I, I can't do that forever. Yeah, that's not sustainable. So I'm getting tired of this nagging bitch, <laughs> right? And so here we go. Like. The, the little poison, the little undercurrents, you know, mm -hmm. like the underground river is right. starting to take power. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I can't do it anymore. Wow, mm -hmm. she's nagging. Wow, mm -hmm. what a bitch. And then I start, I start talking with my buddies, you know. Well, I managed to get away from my wife for a minute, you know, but she's yeah. so demanding. I don't know what to do. Yeah. And me and Mitchell, we're going to talk about that. Yeah, we're going to get into that more. So did you guys see the difference right. in those two expressions yeah cool we're gonna, we're gonna get <laughs> well it i hope i you know, i hope so it's like the first one i was just so melty oh yeah. wow that feels so good well yeah. maybe you know i i in in the first one you're like would you give me a hug right mm -hmm. okay well that's very open mm -hmm. okay because your baby i'm gonna give you a hug but give me five minutes because i just got in and i need to go to the bathroom mm -hmm. and after that i'll feel so much better i can give you a hug okay mm -hmm. i i have flexibility here mm -hmm. i'm mm -hmm. my own person mm -hmm. with my own agency mm -hmm. doing my own things and we're coming together the second one is really demanding is like pushing for immediate result don't mm -hmm. you love me anymore mm -hmm. i'm wrong mm -hmm. like i'm guilty of mm -hmm. being wrong so mm -hmm. let's uh let's uh, start to unpack it right <laughs> so if you look at your handout here we have <clears throat> conscious communication is direct with no shortcuts it's accurate once again authentic it expresses honesty and clarity um you invite curiosity in flexibility is there and there's no wrongness implied hmm. i feel that's really crucial yeah no wrongness it's like would you give me a hug this this you know i feel lonely i, mm -hmm. I feel disconnected mm -hmm. um i i craving for more connections mm -hmm. like there's no wrongness mm -hmm. is in that it's your truth mm -hmm. you know it invites empathy connection mm -hmm. and cooperation and i think this is a very important piece of nonviolent communication is that it allows you to slow down. Yeah. It and demands you to it slow demands down. you to slow down and to not bypass yeah. certain parts of the process that are crucial. Yeah, that's what I was touching on um, with how the brain works, mm -hmm. because we, we tend to uh, register the thoughts mm -hmm. first, whereas before the thoughts, a whole series of feelings that happened that we haven't registered if we haven't, you know, practiced uh, mm -hmm. this this way of mm -hmm. conscious communication. Mm -hmm. So I, I love this example from um, one of our friends. Um, mm -hmm. she, she, uh, she, she was talking about um, a challenging situation she had with a former roommate at some point. Uh, they were sharing a lot. They were buying stuff together. And so they were filling up the fridge and mm -hmm. Over and over, you know, that this one time, for example, she went to the fridge and opened the fridge. Like, oh, I'm going to cook dinner for us. And she opened the fridge and uh, they, they had bought um, veggie. Yeah, like veggie, veggie patties, patties together. Yeah, together. And there was only one left. Mm -hmm. And she was like, oh, snap. Mm -hmm. What was her first thought? I thought, you know, did you uh, feel dis disrespected? Yeah. Um, what she expressed the first time was that she felt disrespected. Yeah, right? Yeah. And then we that person yeah. is so selfish yeah right that's the first thought the, the we tend to reg register mm -hmm. but then i was like okay but before that thought yeah. when you opened the fridge how did you actually feel mm -hmm. and she was like well wait a minute I, i'm not sure yeah so we passed her one of those handy dandy feelings sheets <laughs> yeah and she actually came up with quite a list of how she felt um, well the first one was shocked yeah she felt shocked. right surprised Mm -hmm. uh confused disappointed yeah she said she felt angry too angry mm -hmm. okay makes sense mm -hmm. uh baffled mm -hmm. you know and before accusing anybody it's like you can re register all those feelings like 
that's how I feel in this moment. Okay. Mm -hmm. So either, you, I mean, you can turn around and say, Hey, I feel really shocked right now. I'm baffled. What happens instead of saying, Hey, you, you know, selfish idiot. Yeah, <laughs> you, yeah, yeah. you again, you did it again. You know, you, you, mm -hmm. um, you ate everything and now there's nothing um, left to eat. And so also like, you know, they were paying the month, the the rents yeah. late mm -hmm. so every um every time at the beginning of the month she was like well i need to pay rent but i haven't got the rent from my roommate yet mm -hmm. so you know what does it mean mm -hmm. so either we register the thought well she's screwing me over again mm -hmm. that's the thought but before that we have a feeling mm -hmm. i feel anxious you know i feel really scared right now mm -hmm. because i feel pressured mm -hmm. to uh, to up from the money yeah so that's talk that's conscious communication is right. talking in feelings uh -huh. and needs mm -hmm. and um the um, the father of conscious communication he called it nonviolent communication is marshall rosenberg he called his book a language of life mm -hmm. okay so the language of life like the crux of it i'm mm -hmm. gonna save you uh, <laughs> uh 212 pages of reading the 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 secret of the language of life is to to think and to communicate in feelings and needs mm -hmm. and thoughts later mm -hmm. because so <laughs> when you use um common language or you know every day not conscious communication <laughs> unconscious if you will um there are shortcuts implied feelings or needs but there's also implied wrongness confusion suspicion mm -hmm. going to court which going to court is, you know, making a case and you're going to go to court and then you're going to show why you are right yeah. and why the other person is wrong. Um, defensiveness, accusation, suspicion, enemy image, uh, which we're going to talk about a little bit more, and bypassing your own emotions in the process. Yeah, which is uh, what the example uh, mm -hmm. was demonstrating. Mm -hmm. So um, in our next workshop, we know we, we said, um, so the difference between openness and enemy image, and and one of the participants said, well, I, I don't see any enemy image here. We're not enemies. Mm -hmm. Well, listen to the language. You know, mm -hmm. I feel defensive. I feel suspicious. Mm -hmm. You know, um, who who's, you know, whose side are you? Mm -hmm. You know, who's right and who's wrong? Mm -hmm. I need to prove that person that they're wrong and I'm right. right. All that is war language. Yeah. Okay. So we we're talking earlier about uh, the small rivers, mm -hmm. you know, um, en français, uh, uh, in French, we, we say, uh, les petites rivières deviennent des grands fleuves, which means like small rivers be become like very large uh, rivers. And so uh -huh. if you start feeling a little poison in your relationship, mm -hmm. where do you think it ends up? Mm -hmm. Probably heart uh heartbreak uh uh excruciating breakups divorce yeah. mm -hmm. you know all that comes from this really subtle beginning yeah of that that starts with an enemy image you don't register maybe at first as an enemy right, image right. but it nurtures a you know your differences yeah are are wrong you know it's, you you need to change to accommodate me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that we, we don't need to do that we can shift that paradigm yeah so what we would like is once again curiosity empathy flexibility connection and cooperation and what we want to avoid is building resentment defensiveness moralistic judgments yeah. suspicion stories and self-righteousness yeah so what i'm trying to say is that um your communication would reflect your inner disposition right so right. if you're focusing on your own feelings and needs mm -hmm. you know when you open the fridge and there's only one party left yeah. it's like oh, i feel all those feelings and that nurtures openness mm -hmm. okay now you might turn to the other and go like what happened and say yeah. well you know i ate everything and who cares right okay well that makes me uncomfortable okay i i, I don't like that mm -hmm. when i hear that i feel 
all those other sets of feelings like angry and it's like I need fairness. It's my need for fairness is not met right now. Okay, I can have this whole process inside of me yeah. without creating enemy image. Mm-hmm. And so then we are able to have like the, the only way to have empathy for the other mm-hmm. is to have empathy for self yes. first. Mm-hmm. And the only way to place a healthy boundary is to be aware of all that that's process we need to slow right. down in order right to do and that. be aware of the process and just to clarify too openness does not mean you're a doormat no <laughs> you know you still have your boundaries in place you still are meeting your needs you yeah. still have your own feelings mm-hmm. you're just not it's okay it's fine you know i share everything with everyone you know, there isn't a spiritual bypass going on. Yeah, that would be putting things under the rug. Yeah. Uh, whereas this process allows to reconfront mm-hmm. the other without making them wrong. Right. Okay. Right. This is not working for me. I feel really upset. I feel angry. Like I, I'm gonna blow up if that if that continues. I'm not making the other wrong. I'm sharing my truth and my reality, mm-hmm. and then the other can share share their truth and their their reality. And then we can find a win-win solution, right. or we can agree to disagree. Mm-hmm. Okay, but we are both. Um, we both have our agency. We don't need to push right. the other into submission. Yeah, there is no push and pull, like you said. So. When uh, now we're gonna switch a little bit and kind of go into talking about what going to court means and building stories and how that is another form of poison. Well, it comes from that enemy image. You know, it's like if you don't go into openness, what's gonna happen? It's gonna get worse and worse. So that that other path Mm -hmm. of enemy image Mm -hmm. tends to create a mindset of going to courts. Mm -hmm. So when people are attached to being right which I know so many people like that. I myself was a former attached to being right person. So addictive. So addictive. <laughs> nothing better than being right all the time because, of course, you're just right. <laughs> but when you're attached to being right and proving that someone is wrong, you lawyer up, one, and you go to court. So you're going to build a strong mental case as to why you're right Mm -hmm. and why the other person is wrong yeah fostering that enemy image and again that might be appropriate if you are a lawyer and you need to win a case if you're a lawyer please do not use (laughs) nonviolent communication although if you did that would be amazing and i want to hear about it yeah (laughs) well it's it's to make distinctions Mm -hmm. right so maybe you are a lawyer or you are somebody who needs to uh, make strong cases to define Mm -hmm defend your standpoint Mm -hmm. um politics um use a lot of polarization okay so we're talking about polarization here i mean i can replace um enemy image with polarization it would be uh you know the same the same thing so in that case yeah go ahead but then um do you know the difference can you register what you're doing oh right now Mm -hmm. i'm polarized polarizing Mm-hmm. awesome let's go all, all the way right? right and then when i get home and i say something that's polarizing like oops i just caught myself saying something polarizing that i'm going to save for my court case yeah. for my job but at home that's not what i want to do yeah because once again that doesn't nurture sustainable intimacy yeah it's gonna and be poisoned if you want intimacy past the honey phase moon you yeah. gotta you gotta pick up some tools somewhere so yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. So yeah, going to court is attached being right, attached to a certain outcome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you have an agenda that you're trying to pursue and, you know, get the other to accept or maybe, um, have them like it's their, it was their idea or whatever, you know, diagnosis and judgment. This is who they are. So if we go back to the fridge situation, you know, uh-huh. she is so selfish. She is yeah. she, she is such a selfish person yeah. and um, immature person, uh-huh. right? Mm-hmm. So that that wraps up the being into one word. That is mm-hmm. very a very molaristic judgment. Yeah. And so it's easy. Like everybody will agree that person is wrong. Yeah. Okay. Blame and shame is right up that alley. Blame and shame is huge in this process. Um, 
you also place yourself as the judge of who deserves punishments or rewards. And I mean, the punishment reward system is huge in our culture. Yeah. Um, and you have deserve language. Like I deserve an apology, an apology and you should admit you're wrong because I deserve this. Yeah. So the result is that when we use that, that type of, Polarization, uh -huh. enemy image, going to court. Well, when people receive judgments or this type of communication, uh -huh. they often see only two options, mm -hmm. either the submit or the rebel. Yeah. Okay. So this maintains a cycle of power struggle. Yeah. And that definitely does, that's not what you want in an intimate relationship. It's not sustainable. You want equality. Um, so... When you use conscious communication or NVC, you are staying open and curious about yourself and others. You're focusing on present feelings and Just, needs. Just, you know, stay open and curious about self mm -hmm. and others. It's important for in our relationship that we stay curious about each other, about the other. Yeah. Um, but that curiosity about self, mm -hmm. I think, is uh, crucial on this yeah. path of um of communication yeah. of self-discovery of um self-reflection self-reflection is essential to, to this yeah definitely staying curious about why you're feeling the way that you feel and yeah yeah it just invites this beautiful process of self-reflection and because a lot of people have self-loathing yeah and that's enemy image and going to court with self yeah why am i so stupid why am i why am i saying those stupid things all the time right mm -hmm. that would be mm -hmm. a self-loathing that would be a, a yeah. enemy enemy image with self so yeah. first you have to dissolve that yeah right <laughs> also <laughs> a process nothing is going to happen yeah. overnight yeah. and if you're in the middle of a self-loathing process and stopping that self-loathing just want to give you a quick shout out and keep doing what you're doing yes yeah. you're doing great work out there focusing on feeling and needs will really help as well yeah there. focusing on your feeling feelings and needs um for example how do you feel right now about yeah. what happened yeah so what's important of this is letting go of your personal agenda and outcomes and letting go of who's right or wrong um, because everyone is just trying to meet their own needs. Yeah. Nobody's right. Nobody's wrong. Everybody is just using tools and strategies. Some of them, not the best. Yeah. But everyone's just trying to get their own needs met. And yeah. once you kind of go into that paradigm shift, nobody's right or wrong. Yeah. Every, you can just see everyone for who they are and what they're doing, which is, once again, trying to meet their needs. Yeah, and that's a great way to empathy mm -hmm. to for yourself and for others. Mm -hmm. So when people are connected to their feelings and needs, they willingly cooperate, meet, joyfully meet other people's needs. And that's the that's the real magic of this. Yeah, is the joyfulness, the willingness. Like, of course, I'll do that for you, baby. Can, can yeah. you give me a hug? Of course. Yeah. I mean, uh, we um, we assume that people get together because they have an attraction for for yeah. each other, right? We're talking about intimacy here, yeah. right? I keep reminding it because sometimes people say, "Well, you know, in, in my job, how can I do that?" Well, you don't. Maybe you don't want to go home with that person. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you just want to dissolve a tense situation in moment, and uh -huh. that's all you need. But um, and that that will definitely work there too. Uh, but it's especially in intimate relationships where you're seeing that person like for hours on end, yeah. you know, spend a lot of time with that person. Hopefully you want to go back and see that person again and be excited about mm -hmm. seeing that person because uh, that con feeling of connection is yeah. so soothing and so the yummy. The ooey gooey chocolate chip <laughs> feeling that we are all addicted to. Yeah. <laughs> so going to court is an ego trip. It implies a winner and a loser. Yeah. But it's a short-term strategy, and in the end, everybody loses because there's loss of connection, loss of intimacy, and a loss of quality of the relationship. Yeah. So the style of communication reveals an underlying anxiety that others won't meet our needs willingly. And here's 
this the sentence is crucial yeah so this is a secret this is the this is the true secret <laughs> i'm gonna i'm just gonna say it again because i just want you guys to really pay attention to this statement here this style of communication reveals an underlying anxiety that others won't meet our needs willingly and we assume that we need to use some sort of pressure manipulation or guilt tripping in order to provoke change. And this forces the other person to submit or rebel. I mean, the sad truth is that we're trained mm -hmm. uh, so much into this. Yeah. This is everywhere. This is in politics. This uh -huh. is at work. And of course, this makes great drama for yeah. movies and television uh -huh. and we have a whole nation, a whole world addicted to drama because it cut, it, it, it gets our attention. Yeah. What do, um, I mean, those businesses, yeah. Hollywood, um, the news, uh -huh. media, television, what they, what do they need? Mm -hmm. They need our attention. Yeah. And drama draws our attention. Yeah. Polarization, enemy image draws our attention. And it physically has a response in our bodies. Our yeah. bodies produce more cortisol, which you can be addicted to cortisol. Totally. Um, and you need that rush of cortisol. So you're just constantly seeking out drama. Yeah. In whichever way it presents. And so it's so normalized. Yeah, so normalized. That's what I'm trying to say with the with the addiction to cortisol part is it's very normalized in our culture. It's something... I mean, the movies, it's everywhere. Right. In the movies, mm -hmm. the hero that we spent fir the first half yeah. of the movie empathizing with and yeah. ident identifying with. Yeah. Say that for me again. I identifying with. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> identifying with. Uh -huh. You know, the first half of, of the movie, we identify. I, okay. With. <laughs> we identify with. Yes. Continue. Okay. And now we love this character. And yeah. this character has a villain that they need to, mm -hmm. you know, kick their ass and prove them wrong. Yeah. So the person we love, you know, is supposed to kick ass and prove somebody else is wrong. Mm -hmm. Right. Because there's somebody's right. There's somebody's wrong. There's, there's uh, evil that needs to be yeah. punished, you know, and to, in order to get um, things right in balance, you know, mm -hmm. the the um, evil villain person needs to be punished, mm -hmm. right? And the righteous one is the hero. Well, I can tell you that if you do that in intimate relationship, it's not going to feel connected, who yeah. you go in and all that. So yeah. like mainstream society does not teach us about intimacy. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, even going back and further into this, um, a lot of us, did not have our needs met as children. Yeah. And we developed tools and yeah. strategies to make the people that are supposed to meet our needs for them to listen. Yeah. And, you know, maybe they didn't listen. Maybe they walked away. Maybe they went and did something else. Or maybe they just weren't reliable. Yeah. And now we have this whole arsenal of tools that we've developed. This in new order, reality, new set of beliefs. Yeah. This, the, the, the whole arsenal. And we use that because you know, what we're really afraid of is that nobody's going to meet our needs. Yeah. So we need to force people. We need to punish them. Mm -hmm. We need to guilt trip them. We need to manipulate them some way into meeting our needs. Mm -hmm. And once you can really understand that when, when you see this happening, you know, I mean, it also invites another level of empathy into yeah. a relationship because yeah. you just see someone as the child the small child, you know, their inner child trying to meet their needs. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. But once again, not good for for intimate relationships. There's only so much empathy that can be had until, you know, you, you have to make a boundary of whether you want to engage with this person or walk away. And what we want here is to invite connection. So how can you be connected to your truth mm -hmm. like most of the time? <laughs> Yeah. I'm not going to say it's going to be 100% of the time. Let's We're start, working towards it. <laughs> let's start with 20% and work yeah. our way to 80%. That yeah. will be like already a huge paradigm shift. Yeah. So the great question, the, the golden question uh -huh. is how do we shift our paradigm from polarization or enemy image uh -huh. to openness?
And once again, just touching on that, it is a process. Yeah. Um, and if you're able to grasp this in like 30 seconds, awesome. Yeah. But don't be deterred from wanting this because it is going to take time. Yeah. It's like the way we've been trained throughout our childhood and yeah. adolescence Years. until we're 22 or 23. Yeah. You know, if it could take less than 23 less than 23 years to unprogram this imprint, uh -huh. deprogram this imprint, that would be a miracle. But, you know, maybe a few months or a few, yeah. maybe a couple of years, you know, yeah. let's give us, us a couple of years to yeah. re, uh, shift that paradigm that uh -huh. was ingrained in us for 25 years. Yeah. So we have a little uh, example question to help you kind of start this process on your own. Um, so the question that we're presenting right now is think of a recent challenging situation and describe the situation in one sentence. So we're, we're going to work on our paradigm and try to, to shift it. Huh? So yeah. we, now we're working on how do we shift this paradigm? Okay. Mm -hmm. So to, to get us started, like start with, with something real for you. Yeah. So it's not just theory. Mm -hmm. Okay, so pick a situation, a recent situation that was triggering or upsetting that's kind of still in the air and unresolved, mm -hmm. but, you know, not too uh, threatening, something simple and light mm -hmm. that you can work with um, easily mm -hmm. without having to dig with, you know, yeah. life threatening yeah, issues. Yeah, we're not going to, we're not going into like trauma here. Right. Let's keep it on the... We'll have easy breezy side we'll, of this. We'll have other episodes on trauma. Okay? Yeah, that's a whole <laughs> mini series. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack. So we're gonna use our example of the last trigger that we had in our relationship. Yeah. Um, and we're just gonna describe it so you guys have some background information, and then we'll get we'll paraphrase it in one sentence. Um, so do you want to start? Sure. Uh, so we, we have this uh, part-time business, which is, to, uh, we have a food truck that we sell uh, crepes at the, at the farmer's market because I'm uh -huh. French and so we sell crepes. Uh -huh. And uh, so we, we have a family business and mm -hmm. uh, we work together at the, um, you know, this food truck and mm -hmm. the farmer's market is supposed to end up at noon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, you also have something else in mind. Yeah, this day I had a doula meeting that I had to get to as a presentation to a couple of moms who were who were a couple of couples actually who were seeking information on newborn care. So um, she's a birth worker. Yes. Extra side note: I'm a doula. <laughs> yeah. So I had to get to this meeting, and this meeting was at two o'clock. And it was about 30 minutes away from, from where we live. And on top of that, I was planning on bringing our son to the meeting. And so I had this whole process in my head of, I need to go home and take a shower because I've been, you know, in a crepe trailer for all morning and yeah. I smell like crepes yeah. and I need to go shower and I need to get the baby ready. And then I need to drive all the way across town and get to this meeting before two o'clock, ideally, because yeah. the it meeting really starts is. at two o'clock. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I didn't want to be late. And, you know, we're. So people are still, you know, it's 12 and 12, 10 uh -huh. and 1215 and people are still trickling in. It's yeah. like there's still a line and I have smoke in my eyes and I'm serving crepes as yeah. fast as I can. This is already like a high pressure yeah. uh, job and station. Uh -huh. And there, here, here she, here she <laughs> is. And so what I do is I take the orders and he makes the crepes. And as people are coming up to order, I'm pressuring him and pushing him like, when are we going to stop? We need to stop. <laughs> this is the last client. This is the last order. This is the last client. I don't, meanwhile, there's like a line of like five people who are like, you're going to not take our order. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> so she, she keeps saying that. And for me, it took me a minute for to register because I was really, I was not thinking of that. I was yeah. focusing on yeah. serving people, you know? Yeah. And I saw my like, what? No, wait, yeah. you know, this is a major uh, part of paying our bills. Yeah. I am, hell no. My response yeah. at some point was, what? what's going on? Hell no. Yeah. I'm not going to turn any client or any business away. Mm -hmm. And so she, so. So I'm like, what? We're not going to, we need to leave. We need yeah. to leave. We need to 
be packed up by one o'clock. Meanwhile, it's 1230. I mean, yeah, yeah. It we, takes no. like, you know, minimum maybe 30 minutes to clean the whole trailer and pack up. So so, one, so uh, now Going you understand back, the, yeah, the, now the you background. Have background now. Describe the, the, the situation in one sentence. Mm -hmm. She says, this is our last client. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to start to stop serving after this client. My response is, hell no, I'm not going to turn in any client away. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is, this is, so this is the situation. So try mm -hmm. to find for yourself a similar situation. It's not life threatening. It's, it's yeah. not going to threaten our relationship or yeah. our business or anything. But, you know, there's tension there's here. There's a little bit of friction for sure. Right, exactly. And in this moment, we forgot, you know, our, Feelings and knee charts because yeah. we're in the heat of the action, right? Yeah, we're in a high pressured situation, which is completely normal, you know. Yeah. NVC is beautiful and also in a in a moment um of trigger, it's sometimes hard to remember. Yeah, I mean our feelings and needs. For me, it's totally okay to be messy. Yeah. But the, the important thing is not to hang on to those thoughts you know yeah. we, we're we're arguing on on our thoughts uh -huh. okay we have different strategies to uh -huh. meet our needs mm -hmm. she has a need for you know being on time and going mm -hmm. to this thing that is her life purpose and stuff mm -hmm. and me i'm like you know finances mm -hmm. I, you know it's it takes so much to get here already why not make so another couple. 60 dollars yeah. you know a hundred dollars you know that's ridiculous mm -hmm. So we both have different strategy to meet our needs. And so we are arguing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the, so the, the, the key thing is not to say, oh, you, you, you didn't remember nonviolent communication. It's not about that. So okay? <laughs> it's, it's how fast we can come back to it. Mm -hmm. So in previous relationships, you know, we, it would take a month yeah. or it would take me like, um three hours to try to figure out what was the process and stuff like that now in less than an hour we get it you know yeah. and we come back to connect oh this is what happened this is what you are yeah. you feeling what yeah. you needed now i get it now how can we can we find a, a better strategy yeah. to meet those feelings and needs we come back really quickly mm -hmm. okay so next question is what do you want the other person to know about you so write it in the messy way yeah. okay in in the um the way you've learned it so far yeah. and then we're going to try to learn how to mm -hmm. shift our paradigm and do better mm -hmm. so <laughs> the um, yeah go the ahead. next process of this it brings us to empathy yeah because empathy is the way that we truly can connect and understand what's going on inside of somebody else and this allows us to feel connected so what that's the thing <laughs> i'm this jumping with question. excitement how would you like to feel connected heard seen understood valued belong feel a sense of belonging accepted for who you are right we were fighting which means we're not accepting each other yeah how do we turn this into feeling connected uh -huh. heard seen understood valued accepted for who mm -hmm. we are so when we communicate with our thoughts we can argue forever when we express our feelings and needs we can connect at a core level because feelings and needs are universal yeah. for one every single human on earth and animals probably too <laughs> They all have feelings and they all have needs. We yeah. all have feelings. We all have needs and they cannot be argued with. Right. So if I say, you know, hell no, we're not going to uh, turn any business away. Well, she can argue with that. Yeah. Everybody can have their own opinion mm -hmm. and thought process and they, mm -hmm. they, they might think that they're right. Now, if I say, I'm feeling disappointed. I'm feeling nervous. I'm feeling scared. I'm feeling joyful. I'm feeling excited. Who can relate to that? Who can argue with that? Okay. Everybody can relate to that. Oh yeah. I felt angry before. Yeah. I felt joyful before. I felt mm -hmm. excited, disappointed before. Mm -hmm. Everybody on the planet can relate to that. Needs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's uh let, let's let's use uh the the one so that everybody can follow up uh with us yes. um you know we, we can go to our needs inventory mm -hmm. um i have a need for um harmony i have a need for honesty 
-hmm. for self care, mm -hmm. okay, for acceptance, for joy, for pleasure, yeah, for shelter, mm -hmm. for in that case, my need was for uh, financial safety. Yeah, in that moment. Mm -hmm. In that moment, security, mm -hmm. stability, trust. Mm -hmm. Nobody can argue with you need for trust. Yeah. Okay. So that's the big difference. So the the um, the practice, this tool of um, conscious communication, is to practice to know the difference between our thoughts, our feelings. And our needs. And I'm if you're listening on a podcast and you're not watching the video, I'm pointing to my head when I say thoughts, pointing to my heart when I say feelings, and pointing to my guts when I say needs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like she said, we can argue forever when we communicate um, our thoughts. Yeah. Now, if we, if we communicate through our hearts mm -hmm. and our feelings, mm -hmm. then we can relate to each other. Yeah. And when we communicate through our needs, we when we connect communicate our needs, uh -huh. we can um, really relate and uh, understand each other, understand mm -hmm. each other. Ah, okay, you have a, a, a need for enlivening your purpose. Yeah. I have a need for enlivening my purpose. This very podcast, this very transmission yeah. is a need, it's feeling my needs for enlivening mm -hmm. my purpose. Mm -hmm. So we have a little formula that you can try um, using the situation that you had, um, the question that we gave you guys to answer. Yeah. And so the formula is what's important to me is insert your needs and values here. And I feel, and then this is when you would say your present feelings in that moment. Yeah. So if we bring this, um, to our situation, so, okay, what is important to me is mm -hmm. need and value. Mm -hmm. I feel feeling. Okay, mm -hmm. what is important to me? Let's go into the um, needs inventory. Mm -hmm. So, what's important for me is to. I don't see it on here actually. Um, so, I, I, I can say mine. You yeah, know, it's yeah, like when, when I say hell no, mm -hmm. I'm not going to turn any client away. It's like, what is it? So instead of saying that, I, was, I could say, hey, you know what? What is really important to me right now is financial safety. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I feel really protective of that financial safety. And um, if, if you need to go early, uh, earlier mm -hmm. and, um, and stop uh, serving, mm -hmm. I'm starting to feel anxious and I'm starting to feel uh, fear. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is important to me is our financial safety. And, you know, I feel really protective of it. And if mm -hmm. we have to stop, I that makes me feel um, uh, anxious and scared. Yeah. See, I haven't jumped into any um, strategy yet. Mm -hmm. You know, we first communicate our feelings and our needs mm -hmm. before jumping into the strategy. So what you got? So what is important to me is um, expressing my purpose. Yeah. And timeliness. And timeliness. I have a need for timeliness. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she's not making me wrong mm -hmm. for her needs. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel when you so tap into those needs? What, what I'm tapping into right now is I feel anxious yeah. that I won't be able to meet these needs. My yeah. need for timeliness. Yeah. I feel... I'm a little bit of irritation yeah. because I, again, have this idea that I'm not going to be going to my meeting on time. Yeah. And that makes me feel irritated. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, are you feeling agitated? Yeah, irritated? agitated, yeah. irritated. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, I get that. Anxious. And I get that. So we, we haven't jumped into any strategy yet, yeah. you know. The first thing that she said, you know, we need to stop serving clients. That was a strategy. Yeah. And I'm going to push back for that strategy because I do not like that strategy. Yeah. But if we don't, if we let you remember, I know maybe it was theory at the time. Now it's really concrete. It's like if yeah. we let go any agenda of any agenda yeah. or any um, uh, outcome. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now we're letting go of the agenda or the strategy of uh, stopping yeah. to serve clients. 
okay, we're focusing, we're speaking in feelings and needs. Remember mm -hmm. the secret number one I said in the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> we finally got to it. Yeah. So instead of speaking in strategy and thoughts, you know, we took a minute to process, oh, okay, that was my strategy, but what is my really my real feeling and my real needs? Okay, yeah. what is important to me is to unlive to, to unlive in my purpose mm -hmm. and timeliness. And mm -hmm. so I'm feeling agitated and anxious and irritated. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm not wrong about it. Yeah. And how yeah, I feel I felt irritated before. I know how it feels. Yeah. And you know, and having my purpose is very important to me as well. Yeah, and I definitely understand the need for financial security. Thank you for keeping our family our family's financial security in mind. Thank you. And who knows, maybe you're gonna pick up some clients there, yeah. which is like you also trying to Yeah, I also have a need for financial security. I understand that. And she has a different strategy instead of serving crepes, yeah. you know, it's uh um, going to a doula meeting where there's potential clients a great strategy i can yeah. only improve <laughs> but in moments we were yeah. arguing right in the moment you know it's stressful there's triggers and yeah so now that we've come down into our feelings and needs and we can communicate uh -huh. you know our feelings and needs. okay now it's open mm -hmm. to strategies and so if we let go of the strategy that we thought we had you know mm -hmm. also it's like well you know, if you start cleaning around the, the counter and put things away, I can stir, still stir the, the, the four remaining crepes, you know, uh -huh. Uh -huh. just with chocolate and Nutella or whatever. Uh -huh. And that will save 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. We, we're now we're in cooperation. Remember yeah. enemy image. You need what I, you need to do what I say yeah. you to do. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, I need you to stop serving uh, clients. And yeah. that's not a need. That's a strategy. Yeah. It's a strategy. I hope it all need. makes sense now. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully this is all clicking. So once yeah. again, we're going to give you the formula here for your situation. Go back to that situation that you had previously written down. And I'm sorry. <laughs> so we're get the strat the formula is what's important to me is insert your needs and values and i feel and this is where you would insert your present feelings okay so you jump to the last two pages mm -hmm. and um what's important to me and you find two or three words in the needs inventory mm -hmm. and uh, i feel and you, you go to either the um, feelings when needs are not satisfied uncomfortable mm -hmm. or when they are satisfied uh, comfortable mm -hmm. and you insert there two or three uh, feelings and now you have shift your paradigm <laughs> <laughs> so once again this is a process and if you're in a, a high stress situation and this goes out for just remember that you always have the ability to drop back into this paradigm when you need it yeah. So if you can't access that when you're in, you know, the heat of the moment, things are going on, it's wild out there, but you always have the chance to come back to it and say, you know, hey, baby, can I express what I was trying to express earlier in a different way? Exactly. And your partner is going to be so willing to hear yeah. that. <laughs> and, you know, it, it invites so much connection into and willingness and willingness into the relationship and understanding and once again, that's what we're really going for here. Yeah. So we really invite you uh, to go to our website and download. Yeah. Uh, go to free downloads and get, you know, um, this whole worksheet mm -hmm. that has the list of uni universal feelings and mm -hmm. needs. Um, and the, the, the handouts that we were just like describing to you, this is going to be very precious. Yeah. Especially if you're a visual learner. Right. This is going to really help you cement that into your brain um, because not all of us are audible learners so. that new reality that yeah. paradigm shift and mm -hmm. also on the uh, podcast tab mm -hmm. uh, you have access to all the replays and all the links to mm -hmm. uh, the different apps uh, podcast apps where you can find our podcast on yes and once again if you are in this beautiful city of reno we do offer in in-person workshops at the studio and you can find more information about that on our website with the class at the video tab right, and i believe thanks. our next one is 
the first week of January, right? Uh, we have the 15th, December the 15th. 15th and Sorry, then... I'm like two months ahead. Right? <laughs> and then January December 5th. is over for me. <laughs> Whenever you hear this podcast, just go there and you have the, the latest yeah. dates. So our next class is December 15th. And if you want to come check it out, we will be there teaching. So. <laughs> Um, you know, it's great to have the theory, but practicing. Yeah, I mean, is... practice is huge. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And to be in a room full of people who are all practicing the same thing yeah. just really puts a different kind of magic into it. There's always somebody to give, like, the little uh, story that I get with the yeah. fridge, yeah. like a golden yeah. story like that. Everybody goes, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so that was the first part of the communication. So mm -hmm. this, this series on intimacy, we mm -hmm. talked about the map. Mm -hmm. We talked about the saboteur, the uh -huh. um, um, stowaway. The, yeah, the stowaway. Uh, we started to unpack um, communication, conscious uh -huh. communication. This is the first part. And then we're going to have the second part mm -hmm. uh, next time. And then we're going to go into the uh, territory, the um, Custom and the cultures. Custom and cultures. All right. Since uh, <laughs> until then. Until then, au revoir, <laughs> avidasen, aviento. Be well and be, be well. Be kind with each other. Be kind, and we'll see you guys, or uh, you'll listen to us on our next podcast. All right.